so welcome to today's uh, npetel sponsored lecture uh, on uh, what is electrical engineering so the before i start the uh, presentation uh, i'll just remind everyone that uh, i'll give a quick overview of uh, electrical engineering for about half an hour Uh, I may not cover all all the slides that I have, but I want to take some questions also later. So I'll cover it for about 30 to 40 minutes, and then take on some questions uh, that have been uh, uh, asked on the uh, uh, on on the forum. So the outline of my talk is as follows: is as follows. Since there is a varied audience, I expect a varied audience. Uh, everybody from parents to high school students to maybe even uh students who are uh, pursuing ee degrees right now so i want to cater to all of them so i'll first start off with an introduction to what electrical engineering is a little bit little bit of history and then uh, the why and how of choosing a ug degree in ee so that will cover you know the different kinds of degrees available uh, different kinds of streams etc i'll tell you a little bit more about ee today uh Uh, through the ee sub specialties and then i'll also have a few i also have a few slides about pursuing pg degrees in ee um and finally i'll try to cover a little bit about uh, job and research opportunities in india so let's first start off with this so uh every uh person probably uh, knows what ee is today but uh it is always good it's always a good idea to uh, go back and see right uh, the evolution of electrical engineering itself so if you see historically maybe 150 200 years ago uh, or even uh, further behind uh, engineering at the nascent university level was actually only of two kinds right uh, civil and military uh, but slowly as science progressed as technology progressed uh, uh people realized that they need to have specialization uh inside civil uh, inside military etc and uh, so uh by the late 1800s uh we evolved something called electrical engineering so when we say uh, electrical engineering the electrical part refers to uh, either devices or systems that uses electricity right or magnetism in various forms right um, and of course engineering in general refers to uh, re refers to application of science as well as some uh, involves some sort of design of something so uh, the some examples of electrical engineering right uh, there are power in there is power engineering there is electronics telecommunications etc we'll see a little bit more about these streams uh, in just a few slides um we will also see that many ee disciplines overlap with other areas of engineering and applied sciences so if you look at uh, history of uh, modern electrical engineering as i mentioned uh, it started evolving in the 19th century as we learned more about electricity and magnetism of course it started in the 1700s and kind of matured in the 1800s so <clears throat> you could consider uh, two major breakthroughs uh, of engineering in the 1800s so one of them was telegraphy so you people gained the ability to transmit electrical signals transmit information through electrical signals on a cable right and in about 1866 the transatlantic telegraph cable was laid okay which gave uh, the ability to uh, have rapid communication across the atlantic ocean and similarly in the uh, you know 1870s and 80s the telephone was invented and so you could communicate by voice and the second major breakthrough that uh, propelled electrical engineering in a different direction was the uh, ability to deliver power and use it use electrical power to do 
many many things that were only possible through either through effort of animals or people so if you see there is a famous war of the currents fought between thomas edison and george westinghouse over uh, whether dc or ac power should be delivered to homes and uh, thomas edison was pushing for dc power because he invented the first working light bulb and dc is good enough and in fact better than ac uh, to power light bulbs uh, whereas westinghouse went in the ac transmission direction because he the you know he realized the potential for using transformers as well as motors and uh, you may think that i am giving examples only from the united states but you should always remember that there were similar developments in europe uh, for example the first transformer was invented by a russian uh, pavel yablochkov in 1876 but with all of these developments till the beginning of the 20th century electrical engineering was still considered a subfield of physics so in the 20th century however in today's world in fact you will find that ee has ee has become extremely broad so you have power engineering that deals with supplying electrical energy you have information engineering so basically communication you have semiconductors that build devices to enable realization of communication or power uh, you have electronics that builds these systems and so on and uh, really development of ee has has happened depending on the needs of uh, on various needs actually on society as well as Uh, technology available at any particular time and we should always remember that progress in science and technology heavily depends on uh, involvement of both the government and industry so with all of this we find that uh, you know uh, in the late 1800s electrical engineering got a push now I just wanted to talk about what happened in the universities. So the first EE department in the world started in 1882 at the Technical University of Darmstadt in Germany. And similarly in the US, MIT started the first EE degree program, but interestingly in the physics department. Um and finally in 1885 Cornell University awarded the first EE degree. So in all of this, uh, you can see I we it started off as a subfield of physics. and uh, it took some time even though telegraphy uh, etc made its progress it appeared at the university level only after a long time there was a reason for this uh, if you see the way engineering progresses and at the university level normally it specializes super specializes and eventually once it becomes broad enough in its own area it becomes a separate uh, discipline by itself Uh, one prime example is the evolution of computer science computer science uh, in the earliest days was uh, part of uh, uh, electrical engineering in some sense because it depended on the development of computers but today it's a full fledged discipline and as broad and as deep as uh, electrical engineering in some ways um at that time in the 1800s late 1800s people were worried about uh, the maturity of the science so you know they didn't understand many of these effects uh, that we do today they uh, they did not realize which was better from a technical point of view dc versus ac etc so um, because of this it did take some time for uh, electrical engineering to become its own discipline okay so that is so far for the history of ee itself now let's come down to the major uh, thrust of this talk or rather from your point of view what you are interested in in this talk right you are not here to learn about the history of ee you want to know more about the present and future of electrical engineering so uh, let us say you are considering an undergraduate degree in electrical engineering so the first question uh, that should arise in your mind so uh, if you are a student in high school so you are thinking about ee so the first question is 
in high school you do not know what engineering is you know what science is right so first question is why is ee in engineering and not science right so i have some quotes here and uh, i thought they these quotes uh, from the references 1 and 2 they are pretty uh, nicely put to demarcate engineering and science right so very often you will find that engineers do not want to wait for the science to become mature right they want to start developing it they see the potential they want to see whether they can make use of it and on the way they want to develop uh, the science behind it also and engineering also bridges an important gap between inventors of technology so technicians who are inventors of technology and scientists who advance science so engineering kind of forms the link between these two so engineers dev- use existing technology to push the boundaries of technology and they also develop new technology right using known science and if you are a high school student you are probably thinking about what you will learn in electrical engineering now it's very hard to tell you too much about what you will learn uh, after the first or second year because you need to go through that process before you understand what you are going to learn but i give you some simple pointers right typically the electrical engineering curriculum in your first and second years will start from high school physics fundamentals okay so for example in most indian high school curricula physics curricula you learn a little bit about electricity and you also learn about electrical quantities uh, what is potential uh, difference what is voltage what is current uh, what is charge etc and maybe you also learn a little bit about certain elements in resistors inductors capacitors etc okay and uh, and i know that some curricula also deal with circuit analysis itself building very very rudimentary circuits but you will find that the first course in electrical engineering is normally a course uh, in electric circuits because uh, it is useful in many areas of electrical engineering so for example uh, you will learn more about these elements inductors resistors capacitors but you will also learn about newer elements right you will learn about new types of voltage and current sources you will learn about ac and dc uh, and you will learn how to analyze and build these kinds of circuits okay and you will learn laws that govern these types of circuits without anything more would be out of the scope of such a general talk but i'm just trying to give you pointers okay uh in this case you will learn from a purely engineering point of view right in the case of uh, um let us take a resistor a resistive element you know that you might know that the current through the resistor is proportional to the voltage across the resistor and vice versa but you may not know why right so that's a purely engineering standpoint you may not need to know why to learn ohm's law however in electrical engineering you will also learn why it is that way okay and how it is how to use it and how to build resistors um you will also learn to approach it from the opposite direction so uh, the first electric circuits course will teach you certain empirical laws but you will also learn to approach it from the other side from the pure physics side for example in the first 2 3 uh, first 2 years of electrical engineering you will also have normally have a pure physics course on electromagnetics um, as well as an electromagnetics course taught from an electrical engineering perspective which are slightly different and you will learn uh, how to approach electrical engineering from pure physics so at this point i also want to point out uh, because i am saying you will learn this and you will know this and so on you should remember from an engineering point of view if you say you are learning something it means you should be able to make predictions certain quantitative predictions that is very important right and part of the learning process is also to learn how to apply this to a different situation it may not be a completely new situation but it may be slightly different right uh, that is what makes you a good engineer if you are able to apply this differently right okay 
so um in case there are parents or siblings of uh, high school students listening as well as high school students themselves right why would you want to choose ee actually before we touch that point i will strongly advise parents this is not ee specific let your child or sibling make the choice of what he or she wants to study based on his or her own interest they can take your advice but please do not force them to study something based on what you think they should study because it is important that they make an informed choice and they should also choose something that they are interested in the reason i say this is because typical um the typical person is informed from many different sides but very often from the media and media tends to uh, portray uh, a certain aspect of uh, these engineering disciplines as being very significant and it is true but what you should remember is that every engineering discipline is important in its own way and the same goes for every sub sub specialty of electrical engineering also right so it is important for the uh, student to make his or her own choice based on what they are interested and you will find that ee is broad enough to cater to their interests because there is overlap with many different areas of science and mathematics that the student is already exposed to in high school so the good thing is ee is broad enough such that you will find something that you are interested in if you are interested in basic sciences now um you may also be tempted to decide the area of interest inside ee itself now i would strongly suggest if you are a high school student aspiring to take electrical engineering i would strongly suggest that you wait till you start wait till you hit your second year or third year before you make this choice the reason is you will find that your choices evolve as you learn more about these sub specialties and uh, there is a recent trend in many curricula for more specialization at the undergraduate level this is perfectly fine but you should remember it's also perfectly fine to increase your breadth to learn more about many areas before making a choice okay you will have time till your post graduate studies before making a choice and there's nothing wrong with that and i'll also point out inside ee every stream has potential for research as well as development and uh, you will learn more about these ee streams by sampling what are called elective courses you will have choices in the final year of your undergraduate maybe even before that in some universities and once you undergo those courses you will learn your own interests and choose the specialization based on your interest and your aptitude both of them and i'll just point out i shouldn't uh, i should remember to point out interest can be in many forms you may be interested in pursuing higher studies and research you may have a financial interest financial goal which is perfectly fine uh, you may be interested in taking up an area which has a large number of jobs at the present time uh, you may hear more about it in the media or from friends relatives uh, people and you may decide that it is a cool area to study all of these are perfect perfectly good reasons to take up a to try out uh, ee streams and if you like it that's great now you will find that uh, electrical engineering departments are organized in different ways in different places right um in over the last 30 40 years most higher education universities have tried to organize themselves in a single department the reason is because they all share something in common right so people have moved towards having a single electrical engineering department as well as a single electrical engineering degree right but not all universities have moved to this model uh you will find in india a majority of universities have uh two broad flavors of electrical engineering one of them is uh what is called 
electrical and computer engineering or ECE uh, sorry electronics and communication engineering or ECE and uh, EEE or triple E as it is called which is electrical and electronics engineering you also have electrical and computer engineering in the United States uh, which is a very common way of organizing the department there. that does include power engineering uh, and you will also find in the USA you will find that there are some universities which have electrical engineering and computer science in the same department that is also common but what do each one of these mean as we go through the next few slides you will realize what each one of these means but I'll just broadly point out that the electronics and communication engineering that is found in India encompasses a few areas such as communications, signal processing, semiconductor devices and VLSI. So these are broadly the uh, four broad areas that will be covered under ECE in India. Triple E will cover electronics, power electronics, electrical machines and power systems. So this is an evolution of uh, these have been called uh, organized in this way with various different names. The modern way of talking about it is ECE and Triple E. Um, 50 years ago or 70 years ago, it used to be called uh, heavy current and light current, uh, ECE and e EC and EP, electronics and communication, electrical power, and so on. So these names keep changing, but you will broadly see that high power engineering and low power engineering are broad divisions uh, in EE itself. And it is quite possible for the same department to offer two degrees. So that happens, that used to happen at IIT Madras, for example, uh, but it happens in uh, other universities at this time too. And one last point is that you will see that there are Indian universities that offer something called instrumentation engineering, that is a sub branch of electrical engineering. And uh, instrumentation is the application of electronics to various uh, engineering disciplines okay um, so you may be trying to process information in electrical form so you may be interested in conversion from some physical form to electrical form so that is one part of instrumentation engineering you will also be interested in processing that electrical information in electronic means. So that is also part of instrumentation engineering. So what are the foundational courses that you will be studying? Obviously the first year of electrical engineering will be spent in studying basic science and mathematics, right? So that will give you the transition from high school to EE itself. Apart from this, over the first two years, you'll be learning uh, three or four extremely important courses in electrical engineering. The reason I say they are extremely important is because they are going to form the basis of many different streams of engineering. If you study these really well, you will have a solid foundation to progress in your studies uh, to more specialized streams. So electric circuits, electric circuit theory, signals and systems, digital systems, analog circuits and digital signal processing. So these will broadly form, uh, give you the foundation to uh, branch out into more specialized forms of uh, electrical engineering. Now, I wanted to include this slide to tell those parents as well as high school students that the system in many universities across the world and in India also are quite different from uh, high school. So in high school, you are used to uh, getting a, um, your marks in, you know, on a scale of zero to hundred, right? And many universities do follow that system. But you should also know that the university that you go to may be following a system uh, called the credit system and they may be following a grading system called GPA or grade point average. Okay. And you, there are lots of universities in India and abroad that follow this credit system, right? It is a little bit different from the uh, mark system. 
so normally in india when you say uh, you follow a credit system each course that you do that you study at the university level will have will be allotted a certain number of credits that you will know in advance okay and normally the number of credits will be equal to the number of contact hours what do i mean by contact hours if you have 3 hours of lectures per week the course is normally a 3 credit course if you have 4 courses 4 classes per week it will be a 4 credit course if you only have one class per week one hour of class per week it will be a one credit course um and the marks that you earn in the course will normally be awarded a a letter grade so a b c and so on and you will also be graded in the form of a grade point average so the grade point average in a particular semester will be the weighted average of all the grades you receive in different courses in a particular semester normally this is on a 10 point scale you will also be uh, your mark sheet or transcript as it is called will also have something called a cumulative gpa so you'll have a weighted average of gpas across several semesters so that at the end of your eight semesters four years you will have a cgpa a final eight semester cgpa now uh the important thing to note is that students are students are expected and required to maintain a minimum cgpa across semesters and you are also required to earn a certain number of credits before you can be awarded a degree so that is quite different i would encourage those of you who are interested in learning more about this to read up on this at the appropriate time so now uh now that you know a little bit about how ee departments are organized what courses are important um history of ee etc right another part of making your decision about whether you want to study ee is knowing more about the different sub specialties or sub streams of electrical engineering so you may be interested in knowing um you know what are the different areas that form ee so i'll quickly go through this i may not have enough time to dwell on each one of these in detail but i will try to give you the important uh, you know flavors of each one of these each of these streams so there are you know you can divide depending on how super specialized you want to get you can divide into many streams but here i have listed six or seven streams that are really important so communication signal processing and information theory are uh, is one important uh, stream solid state devices also called semiconductor devices vlsi control engineering instrumentation uh, power systems and machines power electronics are important uh, energy dealing with that deal important streams that deal with electrical energy then you have electrical engineering streams that deal with light so that area is called photonics and interface with electronics so you have a stream called optoelectronics and finally you deal with electromagnetic waves either in open air or on uh, uh, on a wire so that is called electromagnetics and microwave engineering and you will find that uh, different universities will club these together in various forms in various groups and that is normally a factor you know based on many different factors it could be because you know they have a strength in a certain area their faculty collaborate in a certain way maybe the number of faculty maybe the research funding that they have uh, it is a, and it keeps changing also so i wouldn't place too much uh, emphasis on how it is divided the important thing is to know each one of these really well so i'll try to talk a little bit more about each one of these uh um, if you look at microelectronics microelectronics deals with um making extremely small uh, electronic components and systems on what is called an integrated circuit normally in today's world that means you are making it on silicon okay and uh, really this has the advances in semiconductors uh, microelectronics has been has really fueled the advances in hardware for many many different areas of electrical engineering as well as outside electrical engineering and if you see 
normally semiconductors is driven by advances in material science and then semiconductors pushes advances in electronics and finally electronics pushes the advances in uh, you know the highest layer communication uh, you know uh, it and so on and what about what does communications deal with you deal with wireless communication for example so you want to transmit uh, a signal from uh, one region to another region so in the earliest days this used to be radio but in today's world uh, and television but in today's world you know you have cellular uh, you know uh, communication you have satellite communication so advances in wireless communication has driven all of these areas and you also this also deals with signal processing so you have uh, videos uh, images that need to be processed this need to be cleaned up uh, and you also want to detect video and images in these days um, and uh, you want to process speech because maybe you want to uh, have voice activated devices uh, you may want to understand language so this is a big area for speech processing um, in india there are various universities and researchers working on processing and producing speech for indian languages so these are all very important areas for advances in electrical engineering another area deals with high energy devices so power systems power electronics and high voltage systems so you deal with motor drive so it could be uh, very high power motors on an industrial scale all the way down to extremely small motors used in watches uh, you know used for uh, you know extremely miniature devices another area that uh, you know energy uh, electrical energy engineering deals with is in renewable energy so in today's world you need to uh, deal you need to transform different sources of physical energy into electrical energy you need to be able to absorb that electrical energy and uh, store it and transmit it to other parts of the uh, other regions of the country right so uh, renewable energy is an extremely important uh, focus of uh, electrical power engineering and of course uh, there are financial aspect to energy markets markets because of renewable energy and uh, you know your grid needs to be able to handle it so these are all aspects that will uh, come under power engineering uh, you have another area of engineering uh, electrical engineering called control and instrumentation so you deal with uh, instrumentation i've already talked about i've talked about sensing signals in physical uh, form and converting them to electrical form so those are called transducers and sensors and you also uh, need to process those signals that is instrumentation but a major focus of instrumentation in today's world is biomedical instrumentation right and how it leads to healthcare technology then control engineering deals with robotics as well as uh, what is uh, becoming a new area of uh, interest for many people which are called cyber physical systems on the optical side i talked about how you deal with uh, light in various forms so you will find that uh, uh, there are three several different areas of processing but all the way down from auto electronic devices all the way to systems but uh, several areas that are really important are fiber optics so when you want to do high uh, long range communication with lots of data you cannot do it in a wireless form you have to do it using fiber optics and lasers advances in lasers have really driven uh, this uh, this particular field in the future people are thinking about processing high bandwidth data on integrated circuits using light so that is a really important area for the future called silicon photonics and there is a lot of overlap between uh, this area and microwave and uh, rf systems now this area is basically electronics in modern form uh, anything to do with hardware realization of circuits and systems so you have analog system uh, you know vlsi and digital vlsi uh, and you have sub specialities inside that 
uh, embedded systems uh, uh, is also an important imp important uh, part of uh, modern VLSI. So there are various specialization, but the basic idea is to design circuits, analog circuits or digital circuits. You need to be able to simulate them because these are extremely complicated circuits. You need to be able to fabricate them on semiconductor uh, integrated circuits. And finally, you also have to test them and make sure they work, right? So VLSI in, is involved with every part of this. Finally, these prototypes will be uh, productized in electronic form and used, uh, you know, by communication engineers, signal processing engineers, etc. So um, I'll just point out very quickly that EE, uh, you know, has a lot of overlap with various branches of science and engineering, uh, biomedical sciences in the form of biomedical instrumentation and healthcare technologies, physics, so solid state devices and photonics have a lot of overlap with physics, um, material science drives a lot of innovation in micro and nano electronics, uh, avionics is a specialized electronics field uh, dealing with aerospace. Um, uh, you know, you have computer overlap, lots of overlap with computer science, etc. Now, what are the areas? So those of you who are interested in taking up this field uh, in UG will also be interested finally in uh, where you're going to be, where you'll see yourself in five or six years or 10 years. Why, you know, one of the reasons you want to take electrical engineering is because you want to see a future for EE. And it turns out that EE is one of the areas that has a very promising future for because it is a very uh, wide field, a very broad field, as well as a very deep field, right? So it has overlap with sciences and other areas of engineering. It is also extremely deep and drives a lot of technology in many different forms, right? And therefore, uh, uh, you need have no doubt that whatever area of electrical engineering, ECE, EEE, doesn't matter. There are lots and lots of applications uh, that will lead you into the future, right? And I have listed a few of them here, uh, but uh, you should have no doubt in your minds that uh, there is a large scope for future research and development in the form of jobs in EE. Okay, but uh, uh, I just kind of wanted to end this with a little bit of uh, information for those of you who, of you who are already pursuing electrical engineering, right? So you may be interested in higher studies, right? So I wanted to have a couple of slides on um, higher studies in EE, right? So of course, a gate exam is a must, right? For master's and PhD degree, for master's degrees in Indian universities. However, in many universities, uh, PhD applicants, uh, applications may not require a gate mandatorily, but you should check, right, with each university. And you should also know that the gate exam is increasingly used by public sector companies to rank applicants as a requirement for incoming applicants. Okay. And uh, the different departments and universities may choose the particular stream of, uh, of gate that you need to write before you are uh, eligible to apply to that particular uh, university or department. Okay. Uh, as always, if you are not sure how to prepare for GATE, uh, I would suggest strongly also uh, using NPTEL videos to, uh, to augment your GATE preparation. They cannot be the primary uh, form of GATE preparation. They may not be, but you should use them to augment because they are a freely and very good available resource. Um, there are several different possibilities for postgraduate studies. So uh, the first of them would be MTech or in some universities ME. So this is basically a job oriented uh, degree, master's degree. So basically it's a course based degree. Okay. And uh, you are going to be uh, looking for a most probably looking for a job after an MTech or an ME degree. Uh, you are trying to specialize in a particular area and then go for a job. And uh, so obviously you need GATE as a prerequisite and the assumption is that you have chosen one or two EE streams that you are interested in based on the courses that you have studied in your undergraduate. And you should remember that the admission criteria differs from institute to institute. Okay. 
and uh, uh, you should remember that as i mentioned before different even in the same department some streams may accept certain gate paper scores while others may not so please be careful when checking for these and uh, the important thing to note about masters degree is that it is time limited so in 4 years as long as you do well you are pretty much guaranteed to complete your mtech and you can go in for a job there is many universities also have what is called an ms degree right? this is normally an M masters by research okay uh, this is not a time bound degree right the completion time really depends on how your research progresses which is a strong function of how hard the student works okay normally this will take you about 2 and 1/2 to 3 years and you will have a much larger thesis and a much smaller course component and uh, normally this is taken up by students who are interested in research so you will be studying a particular aspect of ee in a deeper manner okay and maybe you are interested in a phd after this and in which in which case you will take up an ms but even mtech students of course can apply for phd admissions and they often do after your masters degree you will go in for a research based phd degree and again this is also not time bound this also depends on uh, the students uh, rate of students work and you will for, uh, work very closely in the ms and phd degrees with an advisor research advisor and uh, you know there are strong publication requirements and uh, you should definitely choose the phd research area based only on interest and not on what is available okay because this is something that i want to stress uh, i cannot stress enough you should it's a phd is a long a commitment for a long period of time normally it takes 4 to 5 or 6 years so uh, you should really take it up only if you are 100% sure that you want to take it up now the other thing you should know if you are interested in an academic career a phd is almost a must uh, for many universities now what about job opportunities um you should know that electrical engineering has a very good scope for jobs in india right uh <clears throat> what we find in my experience uh, in our experience we have found that undergraduates uh, because their course has been their uh, both courses and the degree has been little bit broader in nature they have the option of choosing many different uh, areas so they go in for a variety of jobs so whereas once you are at the post graduate level once you have graduated with a masters degree you want to go in for core electrical engineering jobs right so normally that means uh, jobs in uh, multinational companies uh, indian startups public sector units right there are indian uh, engineering companies right so i have i have not listed some of these points but i just wanted to give you a variety right of what people go in for the undergraduate students also go in for you know a, a outside these so they go in for finance jobs data analytics sometimes even branch out into it and software that is just a function of how uh, you get narrower as you go higher up in the uh, degrees okay and you will find that ee students have a very good placement record normally and you will find that they are placed in a variety i have just you know put in a few of the places where iitm ee students get placed you will find indian companies you will find multinational companies you will find psus uh, you know and so on right so you will find all of them represent here having said that you will find that there are strong research opportunities in india uh, indian universities have some of the best infrastructure so even if you are thinking uh, not sure consider applying for research higher research even in india because you will find that there are there is world class research going on in almost all areas of ee in universities in the best universities in india so i'll kind of stop my uh, talk here so <clears throat> uh, at this time what i'll do is i'll transition to taking some of the questions i may not be able to take all the questions that you folks have uh, 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 put in but i will definitely take some of the questions right i'll try to answer as many questions as i can in the next 15 to 20 minutes
okay so i have a few uh, questions here okay so i'll go start with the easier ones and then go on the quicker ones and then go on to the longer ones so uh, there is a question on <clears throat> mtech versus ms right so i'll deal with the ones that are directly related to the talk and then go on to the more open ended ones so there is a question on how do you choose on mtech versus ms so i have covered some of these things here so for example an mtech is a time bound degree whereas whereas an ms is a is not a time bound degree uh, an mtech is a course based degree whereas an ms is a research based degree a thesis based degree as far as the industry is concerned they will treat you about the same if you are going to take up a job in a company mtech and ms will most probably be treated the same however if you are going to go in for a research based career ms will definitely be more in, you know more useful than an mtech because you will learn how to attack uh, research how do you learn how to research a particular problem attack a particular problem of a deeper nature right unfortunately that takes time so that is the trade off that you make right so an ms is longer than an mtech normally because it takes longer now you should also know i see another question on you know uh, foreign ms programs versus indian ms uh, mtech phd programs i'll just point out that in for example i know most about the united states of america uh, degrees in the us and i'll tell you that the masters degrees in most of the us universities will be more closely related to our own mtech rather than rather than the ms degree in india okay they do not have such a strong distinction and many us universities have moved moved towards an mtech only model right where it's a time bound you do less research and more towards feeding the industry real research is done at the phd level um if you are interested in an academic career eventually going for a phd uh going for an ms degree if you are interested in doing research going for an ms degree if you are interested only in taking up a job and this is pretty much going to be the final degree that you pursue take a take up an mtech degree if you worry that you know you want to complete your degree you know within 2 years you are very worried you have a financial constraint etc take up an mtech degree okay so that is how you would make the trade off different people would make uh, trade offs in different ways now i'll attack the second uh, i'll answer the second question how do foreign programs stack up against indian programs <clears throat> specific the mtech programs uh, in india probably compare very well with the ms programs for example from the us the and indian ms is probably in between the uh, ms and phd degrees abroad okay because the mtech degree in abroad would probably get completed in 2 years whereas your uh, indian ms degree would take you 3 years right so it is a little bit more research focused so i would place the ms degree a little bit between the mtech and phd degrees in today's scenario i can assure you that many of the top universities in india have some of the best professors uh they have the same level of courses advanced courses that are taught uh in indian universities such as the iits indian institute of science etc and the central universities as what you would find in universities abroad many of the faculty are have graduated uh, after having completed research either in india or abroad in these top universities the infrastructure for research is as good or sometimes even better in some areas in indian universities okay so it's very important to note that indian universities are almost as good or better right in in certain aspects okay having said that obviously uh funding may be better in certain universities uh, abroad okay in certain areas okay there are lots of areas where government funding does not uh, you know is not lacking there is a lot of government funding nowadays in 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 lot of the key areas where you know uh, progress has been deemed important by the government same thing with phd programs uh, indian phds in many areas are no less than 
PhDs abroad. Okay. Let me take a different question. Um, let me try to pick up something uh, different. Uh, okay. Regarding career options in EE, both during undergraduate, after the fourth year and after UG, and branching to other fields. Uh, there is also a question on government sector uh, EE options. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, it is only in the third year of your undergraduate that you will be uh, branching out into specialities inside EE itself, right? Till then, you'll be learning the basics and then the slightly more advanced uh, courses. Okay. Now, after the third year, many students try to do internships and sometimes that works out for jobs for them. But um, let me tell you that uh, for a majority of undergraduates, between the fourth year of your undergraduate and a few years later, either during your master's or during your work, you will find that your own interests as well as career options will evolve very drastically, right? You will find yourself getting interested because at that time you will have enough knowledge to start reading more and learning more about what is happening in other fields. You will, your own interests will get modified because of these, uh, you know, reading, learning more about these things. Okay. And, uh, after UG, uh, you will have a broad range of career options and you will find that your career options narrow down after your PhD. The types of jobs that you can take up will be much will be highly specialized, right? There'll be a lot of job opportunities that will be closed for you because you're highly you're super specialized. That's OK, right? Because some jobs do require uh, very strong, um, um, very strong uh, EE, uh, very strong specializations. OK, um, the. You will find that there are lots of government uh, sector jobs that also uh, let you let you uh, apply after the uh, graduate level. However, uh, you will have to write gate. So that means that uh, you will have to show that you have the sufficient breadth and depth, a uh, sufficient breadth and depth. Uh, or of understanding of your basic courses in EE or uh, ECE or triple E or whatever you call it, right? Uh, let me move on to a different question. Uh, some applications of artificial intelligence and IC designing, okay, and importance of data science. Okay, so uh, uh, let me uh, give you a couple of examples. So artificial intelligence is trying to uh, realize certain aspects of uh, let us say intelligence of the human brain uh, in uh, in electronic form right um, that is also has overlap in what is called machine learning uh, in the area of machine learning so the point is this has two different ways that this can work so one way this can work is to um, one way this can work is to accept information learn information and do a lot of processing in the background uh, in a remote fashion, right? Google, Facebook, these companies work in that form, right? Where they are learning from data. They are taking it to a centralized form in, in a centralized place where they have a lot of computing power where they're learning. So that is that where, you know, in IC designing, there is not a lot of overlap with that area. However, you may want to have machine learning in a limited hardware form, right? And that IC designing has a strong, uh, you know, uh, impact. So, for example, take the case of, uh, you know, Alexa, which is the Amazon, uh, you know, uh, assistant. You also have the Amazon Echo and standalone boxes. So they do have hardware. Um, and uh, you need to be able to process certain things quickly, right? So it is quite possible that uh, you may want to have specialized hardware and you know, the Google Assistant has this 
the Siri has this, you know, Siri and Apple has this. In a lot of these cases, you may want to have some basic processing, uh, you know, uh, locally. You may also want to be able to mimic the, uh, you know, intelligence in very, uh, in areas where you have limited power, limited space, etc. Right. In those cases, IC designing is really important. Right. And people are looking at this. Uh, in certain aspects. So I'll give you one example. So one of the uh, areas of research in digital IC design and computer engineering is an area called approximate computing, right? So if you look at the human brain, it does very often it does not do exact computing really well, but it does approximate computing really, really well, right? The uh, a, a physically designed computer or a smartphone is today very good at doing exact computing, right? If you want to find the, you know, nth root of, uh, of a number, Right. The human brain takes a long time, but a computer does it very quickly. Right. But if you want to eyeball something very quickly, the human brain is often much as good or faster. Right. So now people are trying to design integrated circuits that can do approximate computing. OK. Similarly, they are trying to do, uh, you know, learning systems for use in the field in compact form. Right in both analog and digital ICs. So that is an important area of IC design. However, right, it is a highly specialized form, right? It is a highly specialized area. IC design is already a highly specialized area. Okay. Use of AI and applications of AI in IC designing is highly, uh, you know, is an even more specialized area. Right now, you can also look at it the other way. Maybe the questioner meant talked about apple. Okay, now I see that it may also have he may also have meant of applications of AI in IC designing. Now, this is a slightly even more specialized area. Okay, where you are talking about using AI to design ICs. In my opinion, we are really far away. Right, uh, probably 10 to 15 years away. There is a reason for this. Uh, it is because lot of the focus of AI is not on IC design. There are much more important problems to solve in AI. But definitely uh, one of the problems with the use of AI to design ICs is uh, the requirement for data, right? AI needs to learn somehow. How do IC designers learn? They learn in class. They learn through experience by designing ICs, right? Now uh, you need a data set for AI to learn that data set exists in very fragmented form, right? So it's very difficult for, uh, you know, I don't see this happening for the next 10 to 15 year, years in a very big way. Okay, let me take up a different uh, area. Electric vehicles and smart grid research uh, and industry based options in India. Okay, very good question. So you should know that uh, uh, there are several different companies uh, looking at electric vehicles. Um, obviously, all Indian based vehicle manufacturers, Tata, Mahindra, um, you know, and the two wheeler companies too, uh, Bajaj, TVS, etc. They are all looking at electric vehicles because you are going to see a boom in electric vehicles in the next 10 or 15 years. There is no doubt that uh, we have reached a tipping point where electric vehicles are going to become more prevalent, right? Having said that, it requires uh, it requires a change in infrastructure, okay? Because electric vehicles need to be charged. So first question is, where do you charge them? So there need to be charging points. You need to, if you want to go travel long distance on electric vehicles, you need to be able to swap out batteries quickly. So all of these things, um, you know, need to be looked at. So if you are interested in electric vehicles, definitely an, uh, you know, an important research area. And there are lots of companies which are looking at this. Okay. So, uh, you know, if you are interested in power engineering and electric vehicles, there are various different sub areas. Battery technology is an important part of this. Um, motor drives, electrical motor drives, because a lot of motor, uh, you know, uh, motors that have been used in industry and vehicles so far were all not vehicles, but in industry definitely so far were uh, AC motors, induction motors and synchronous motors. Now, DC motors are being strongly uh, used. 
because of the advances in dc powered uh, you know uh, processing so definitely an important area now uh, let me take up a different area again what are the scopes of nano electronics and photonics uh, photonic integrated circuits for quantum computing do i get to design circuits and systems if you study nano electronics uh, that's a very good question i may not be the best person to uh, tell you all the deep nitty gritties of each one of these areas okay because i myself deal with integrated circuits having said that if today somebody tells you that you are studying nano electronics you are most probably not designing circuits and systems you are basically designing nano electronic devices normally that is what is meant by nano electronics okay um, however this might change in 15 to 20 years okay if silicon devices reach uh, a point where you cannot have any silicon based devices uh, do not see any strong advancements beyond a certain point you may find that there are other areas of nano electronics that catch up in performance okay uh, you may see a lot of circuits and systems being developed uh, using different types of nano electronics i don't see that happening for the next 15 to 20 years okay now photonic integrated circuits definitely an important area of research uh, a lot of the big companies are also looking at this uh, uh, companies like intel uh, are looking at this in a very big way because this is going to drive high bandwidth communication between computers uh, in server farms right you know that servers are you know there is a bandwidth constraint in servers so photonic Uh, uh transceivers photonic ic's are going to be extremely important um okay let me take a different tack i see a new question many students feel that ee program is difficult compared to computer science etc uh this is a very interesting question um i don't know if the second part of the, the second part of the question is hence students are not opting to study ee is this true uh i will say that the i am not sure about the second part okay there may be some students who do not opt to study ee in my own experience from 20 30 years ago that is true okay having said that uh the first part of the uh, statement uh is true in certain aspects it is true that some aspects of ee are slightly difficult compared to uh, uh civil mechanical etc there are certain aspects there is also a feeling that electrical engineering courses the academic program is more rigorous or not i should not say more rigorous all areas of engineering are rigorous they are more uh, uh they are tougher in some sense they are harder to study maybe they are graded in a harder way i think there are certain uh, aspects to it that are true right some parts of it are cultural some part of it are to do with uh, the breadth and depth of electrical engineering that you have to learn before you can become useful in uh, you know in doing advanced ee uh, you know advanced research or development in ee okay uh, but i think the first part there is a feeling among people general feeling that it is difficult um i personally don't think it is that specifically difficult with respect to other branches of engineering but your mileage may vary okay what are the skills required to get a job in a core company that's a very good question so let me tell you uh if you see during my presentation i listed out a set of 4 5 6 courses that are very important to create to set the basics of your electrical engineering right the foundational courses is what i call them okay you study those courses really well you will find that a majority of ee core companies will test your foundation in those in those areas okay i may have left out one or two but i can assure you uh, 80 to 90% of companies will test your uh, skills in those courses there is a reason for those those are the areas that are uh, if your basics in those areas are really really solid 
you can learn the more advanced stuff on the uh, you know later also because you have already been exposed to them even if you have not learned them well you can get advanced right you can imagine that uh, if a student comes to the first course in electrical engineering right but has not studied high school mathematics or high school physics it is very diff difficult to make up that lack of knowledge in high school uh, mathematics or physics uh, you know you have to start somewhere and that is the similar uh, you know idea uh, uh, you know uh, behind uh, having certain foundational courses those will be the skills as always you know those foundations really well you will find that the core companies will test you in those areas okay i think i'll take one last question before uh, kind of ending this quick q and a session does electrical engineering relate to robotics if yes what are the concepts of ee related to robotics okay that's also a question that we have not seen before um yes of course electrical engineering does relate strongly to robotics it relates in about uh, a couple of different ways that i can think of immediately okay uh, yes so there are one or two concepts of ee that are or areas of ee that are strongly related to robotics uh, this would most directly map to the area of ee that i called uh, control and instrumentation right um if you see robotics of course deals with uh, moving um things in physical space moving certain uh, objects in physical space right maybe uh, obviously if it's a robot you expect maybe in today's world to see an arm and a leg etc right um this requires a uh, control over the movement of the uh structure right there is a mechanical aspect to it right what do you uh, how do you build that structure right and there is an aspect to it as to what material you make it it needs to be light etc right but i'll deal with the electrical engineering aspect the if you want to move the let us let us take the example of a robotic arm you may want to move it in a particular uh, direction okay first you need to have an idea of what direction is right and you need to understand how much you need to move you need to make sure that the arm does not move in a different direction okay so which means that you need to have control so now you see how why this area of ee is called control engineering you should be able to control right the uh, arm right the movement of the arm and control engineering would deal with that okay there is a, there are there is also instrumentation involved because there is electronics involved you are going to sense the movement through a particular sensor okay you are going to sense how much it has moved and you are going to convert it to electrical form you are going to acquire data in electrical form you are going to process it and then make your decision the process of making the decision correctly is the aspect where control comes in okay the process of acquiring the data and processing the data as well electronics comes in there is a third area of electrical engineering which is extremely important for this which is to use uh, actuators to move this to use motors to move the arm right that is where uh, you know machines electrical machines and drives come into play and power electronics right so you need to be able to move this which requires electrical energy uh, you need to be able to control the you know motor in a specific way the speed the distance it moves etc you control using motors right uh, so there are several of course robotics deals with several different areas of uh, electrical engineering so i think we have covered uh, during this qa session we have covered uh, various different types of questions and uh, various uh, you know everything from academics to research to future of ee and you know uh, uh, you know maybe studies uh, you know abroad and in india and so on so i hope this session was uh, uh, very useful to all of you and uh, i hope uh, you know uh, uh, i want to wish you all the best for your future with starting off with good decision making and taking it forward taking forward that decision suppose you decide to study ee make sure to take uh, 
concentrate on the certain aspects that i pointed out right what foundational uh, aspects of ee are important how to choose your streams etc and finally i want to thank nptel for arranging these sessions uh, i'm sure it is uh, extremely useful to uh, people uh, with different uh, at different levels of their aspirations for engineering thank you